On the new forum that I have on my website, under the Progressive Claw Hammer heading, I was asked recently by a reader to help demystify the art of playing jigs in claw hammer style. Like most claw hammer banjo players, I had studiously avoided anything that had to do with 6-8 time for, for the first few years I began playing. But at one point I decided that I had to take a really serious look at what was going on. Try to figure out what it was about 6-8 time and jigs that was making me so uncomfortable playing them. And I came to a very startling conclusion. It was startling in the fact that it was so simple and something that I had overlooked before. I found that any time that I was having troubles with a jig, arranging a jig, playing a jig, it usually had to do with those spots where I was breaking away from a certain particular pattern with the right hand. And this is what the pattern is. It's a rhythmic pattern, which by the way is exactly the same one that as a child you created when you would skip down the sidewalk. But in this pattern, you are actually making a strike with the fingernails on the first and the third notes of each group of three. So if I took a measure of 6-8 time, it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or you could just think about it in breaking it down into threes. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. But once I had gotten to the point where that was, you know, comfortable, I then sat down and, and started looking at uh, the jigs that I had learned to play up to that point and uh, began to analyze those phrases that just seemed extremely uncomfortable to me. Usually what was happening was I was trying to throw in either a thumb note or a hammer-on or a pull-off on the third note in each group of three. So I might play a phrase that had a two to zero pull-off on the first string followed by an open second string. Something like this. But instead of playing those with two strikes, I would actually bring the thumb into a string on the first strike do the pull off and then sound the thumb off when I released it. Now, it still can you can still create a very fluid sound this way. But what is happening is it's actually requiring your brain to think two notes ahead. Instead of just thinking about the next note you're going to play after the strike, you're actually having to think about that note plus the thumb note because you have to place that thumb into the string on the first note of the group of three. So it has to be there in place when I hit that first note. It has to rest there as I do the pull off and then finally sound off later on. Not only was this confusing because I had to think ahead too far, which is hard to do for me, but also it was breaking the natu natural pumping motion of the right hand. No longer was it doing this, but it was doing this. So instead of that, I was having to switch between those two ideas. This was where I was having problems. I could not keep any type of steady rhythmic motion going with the right hand. So I started to look through all the tunes that I played and found out that in every single instance where I encountered a note on the third beat played either with a hammer-on pull-off slide or the thumb, I could just reinsert another strike on that particular string. Um, I haven't encountered any exceptions to that rule, rule up to this point. This is what um, really was the breakthrough that made jigs become very, very comfortable for me. I soon found that I could take songs that weren't in 6-8 at all, non-jig tunes, um, especially if they were very, very slow, and utilize this 
new technique of playing in 6-8 time to create these uh, series of triplets, um, whether they were, you know, maybe six notes or nine notes or twelve notes in a row, I could actually throw together these uh, series of, of triplets to uh, spice up a tune. Um, I could take a song like Maiden's Prayer, a very slow ballad um, with a swing feel to it. I could take that last little section, maybe play it like that, where I threw in nine uh, notes, triplets, uh, triplet notes in a row. So three triplets. Um, I could take whole sections of the song. to create something that uh, uh, I would never have thought I could have done before. Um, this especially became apparent when I started to experiment around with this idea on blues tunes. Um, blues men are notorious for throwing these just great triplet bass blues runs into their, their playing. Um, I can demonstrate this uh, probably best on uh, a tune that uh, I have the backup on my website, my tab site, uh, a song called Going to Chicago Blues, it sounds like this. Well, I waked up this morning, going to Chicago Blues. Now, on the end of that, after I finished singing, I threw in a little fill in like, um, using regular claw hammer technique. But listen to what happens if I then move from this into this, this jig technique. Well, I waked up this morning going to Chicago City don't need another bad funk guy like you. That's going overboard. You know, I'm using far more than I would actually use in the song, but you can get an idea of uh, the effect that it could create. Where you're in one minute, you know, playing this, and then the next. Idea there, if you're practicing that, would be to get to the point where you can move from that to and then back to and it's going to create some great runs. Just a lot of fun, and this is how I approach jigs. It sounds complicated, but the right hand is simply doing this. And then I'm just adding in all those hammer-ons and pull-offs, and I don't have to worry about stumbling over my thumb anymore. Um, this is what has helped me to get to the point where uh, Jigs are no longer threatening to me at all. Um, uh, you know, I could take, uh, suddenly take a song.
concentrate more on the feel and not worry about what the right hand was doing. 